Well, here we go again, another unboxing. I was quite, I was quite fortunate in my misfortune that uh, I was sent a, a guitar that was had faulty uh, wood, and uh, despite an argument about um, you know stuff, technical stuff, I had to uh, bring out the big guns and mention stuff like shit and things like that. To get them to take it back, not not the seller, but the the manufacturer. So uh, since they sent me a, another guitar and they paid the shipping, I decided to well repay it by ordering a whole bunch of other stuff. And they said that uh, it would be in my best interest to order as much as possible because they would be paying the shipping. Now what I don't understand is why uh, shipping is free to England and, and Germany or Europe, some places in Europe, but shipping to Iceland is not free. But what I've always wanted is one of these bags that yeah, I'm about to unsheath right now. It's. Uh, Basically, it's a coffin. It's a coffin guitar case. It's uh, hard, and uh, this is the lighter of the two that I got. Actually, I'd, I'd like another one like this, really, because. Um, and here we go. The the opening. The opening has to be ceremonious. Has to be. Uh, a bit special so are you ready here we go yeah, so, uh, these take the dampness out of um, a lot of guitars have, have rust on them which I found really strange in the USA they have rust on the, the the strings. I mean the strings, of course, but also on the hardware, the humbuckers and stuff like that. Now I wanna. This is a, a guitar that I bought off an Icelandic guy. Um, it's very much like the guitar that I'm receiving, which had a faulty uh, wood thing. It was under the varnish. It was it was damaged, and uh, it was it was a bit hard to see. So I don't blame them really. And uh, I don't blame really Epiphone either for refusing to, uh, or at least, you know, c concerned about taking it back. But it was faulty, and I was not happy with it. And, and at first they were going to just write it off, but, you know, never mind. Okay, let's take a look. Now, this is the, uh, this is the other coffin case. Now, this one was really heavy. This is really heavy, this box and the case is really heavy but being heavy duty it probably protects the guitar even more um, but um, yeah coming back to what I was talking about um, at first Epiphone refused to to said it was uh, but they, they said their technical department would take a look at it I'm not going to dwell too much on this it's it's negative uh, stuff and I didn't I didn't like it very much and I had to complain till I was, you know, red in the face. It really made me mad. But it was not. It was not. I I don't know how they released that guitar from the the factory, and I was very angry with them in my in my words about this uh, guitar that I got. I had to be. I mean, you have to stand up for you right for yourself, right? Because otherwise, they just bulldoze over you. The problem is that uh, with with any online ordering this is really heavy bag you know but the problem is with any online ordering uh, house guitar especially guitars and things like that uh, you have to be careful that that the factories are not sending faulty versions of the guitars um, to to these these online places because it, it will cost you sometimes it costs 
the customer money to send it back. You see what I mean? This is a rather hard thing to open, really. The uh, locks on this, this is twisting locks. It's not just... There we go, another beautiful... It's just missing the vampire, really. Very nice, but really, really heavy. I can imagine a guitar would be really... Yeah, let's, let's see if the Explorer fits in here. Nope. This is my Goth Explorer. No, it doesn't fit in there. Damn it. Okay, let's try the Epiphone again that I bought off the Icelandic guy. And yeah, that fits nicely. That's nice. And uh, if you're traveling somewhere, I bet this uh, coffin case will protect your guitar. Especially, I mean, in such a coffin case, you would put like Gibsons and and really expensive guitars, really. Um, I, I mean, you're paying $3,000 for a guitar. Better have a case that protects it, right? The coffin case is a bit eccentric or a bit flashy or showy or whatever they call it and it may draw undue attention to you uh, when you're traveling because it looks maybe too cool so they're gonna think you're transporting drugs or something now we're gonna open the Epiphone it's Epiphone time this is the red and cream the new one the replacement guitar that came instead of the one that I sent back and um, one of the salespeople uh, was kind enough to take a picture of the body so I know what I'm getting this time I know it doesn't have this uh, faulty it would effect on the guitar and um, this you, you'll, you'll see that this guitar I haven't seen it in person yet but you'll see that um, you see that th this body does not have that fault that the other guitar had. I'm being very careful with it. It's a brand new guitar, of course, and it's always difficult to remove this uh, this bubble wrap bag. But the good thing is that it, does, it this bag does not scratch the surface of the guitar. Very nice. Here we go. I'll use it as a bed. There you go. This is the new guitar. Take that plastic of the, the switch there, the hamburger switch. Here we go. You see, nothing like the other one. This is a brand new guitar and uh, oh, I still have that paper. Okay, here we go. Check the neck for a second. There. there. Oh, sounds good. Oh, plastic. That's the back, all red and beautiful. Whew, it really shiny. But you see, you see, the uh, body is much more uniform. The lines are are perfect. Of course, the other guitar may appeal to someone who likes uh, a flaw in the wood. Uh, you know, um, need to be careful now. Yeah, the other guitar may appeal to someone who, who likes like a fingerprint. Uh, his instrument is like a, his own fingerprint. But this one, this one is very much like the one I bought off the Icelandic guy. So beautiful. Very nice. Put it carefully into his brand new guitar, into a brand new bag. And that's where it is. Okay, truss rod, adjuster and the documentation and a sticker that came with it well that's going to be preserved in the in the glove compartment <laughs> of the bag and that's it basically that's the, the main unboxing and uh, we'll put this safely somewhere okay let's open up another bag Now 
Now these bags are supposed to be X bags. And I thought X meant for Explorer. But we'll have to see if, if my Explorer fits in this one. And if it doesn't fit in the... It's, it's a weird that the Explorer doesn't fit into the coffin bag. Because a goth Explorer is just perfect for a coffin. Let's get this off here. There we go. Yeah. Well, they protect the edges anyway with uh, bubble wrap. Okay, now this one's got four, four latches or fasteners or whatever they call those. Uh, okay. All right, doesn't look big enough for the Explorer, but okay, there's the glove compartment. Let's check if the Explorer fits in this. Oh no, you're kidding me. You're kidding me, the Explorer doesn't fit in this. Oh damn it. Uh, whenever. <laughs> I guess I should have measured it out. Because they do have bags for the Explorer, I know that. But um, I know what fits in here though. The, the Ibanez, or the Ibanez as some call it, the Ibanez would fit in here easily. Um, what shall I do? Oh well. Let's put it aside for now. Let's open one of these uh, one of these stands. Okay, keyboard stand time. Now there are two versions that I got. One is one is uh, has got a special locking mechanism, and the other has a peg. I don't know which one this is now. Um, wow, this is a heavy heavy uh, keyboard stand. Um, I need it because I have a bunch of Roland synthesizers and they're quite heavy, some of them. So I had to get some keyboard stands. And then I have a, a MIDI controller. So I could have the keyboards lined up somewhere and, and, and I could play them with the MIDI controller. It's got 88 keys. Uh, M audio, I believe it is, and uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, how, do, how does this work? Okay, you pull the lever. Okay, hold on, it's a bit stiff. Hold on a second. Okay, pull the lever up, that releases it. Oh, there we go, and then you open it up. There we go, and then push the lever down to close it. There you go. Keyboard stand, very strong, sturdy, heavy, and easily put away. There we go. Hoopla! Brand new thing, so of course it's a bit tough. And uh, so this this must be the lighter one. This uh, keyboard stand is the lighter keyboard stand. I'll open that up for you. Yeah. Yeah, the MIDI controller is really heavy. I've carried it to and from the garage a couple of times. And uh, it, it is, of course, it's got weighted keys, you know what I mean? So it, it feels like a, a wooden keyed piano. But it's really, it, it's plastic keys, but they're, they're weighted. So you, you try carrying that around. So I've been carrying it to and from the garage regularly because uh, I had a small studio in the garage and um, um, unfortunately the roof started leaking and you, you'll never imagine where the roof started leaking it started leaking exactly onto my keyboard onto my synthesizer of all the places it could have leaked it only leaked there of course, I've I've climbed up on the roof now and closed it off, and used some sort of uh, stuff to close it off. Okay, now this is the peg one. Hold on, you you pull it out, and there you go, and it's got little holes. There we go. Yeah, it's got little holes, and and there we go. That uh, should support a quite quite a heavy. Um, 
keyboard really okay so just pull the peg out now this is the other bag um, we're gonna put the uh, the Ibanez in this need to be careful not to cut the bag oh here we go now I'm gonna put the Ibanez in this uh, hard bag because the Ibanez has been a soft bag but that soft bag is quite sturdy I've taken it to a few gigs and uh, where I played live but I didn't realize it looked so dorky until somebody took some pictures of me on stage with with the Ibanez it's a gray Ibanez and uh, here we go I'm gonna put the Ibanez in this bag it'll protect it more than the soft bag that it's in here we go right okay now the, the strap the strap is gonna getting in the way here. Hold on. There we go. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, there. It's not gonna. It's not gonna rub against it or anything. Here we go. All right. So Ibanez has a hard bag finally. Good on ya. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I want to show you the Epiphone Explorer. This is my. Epiphone Goth Explorer. It's um, a bag with a, a red interior, reminiscent of of the the coffin bags. See, very beautiful. Uh, Plectrum on it, ready to play there. And here we go. Yeah, I wanted to get a hard bag for my my. Uh, my Goth Explorer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I took the guitar that was faulty to two guitar makers in Iceland. They got the word out to people that I was interested in how the veneer effect was supposed to be. So I, I was contacted by a few people who had guitars like mine and that's what sort of convinced me to send it back but they said you know why don't you just get a refund and uh, you can buy my guitar so I said how m but how much is it gonna be and, and they, they quoted a very reasonable amount this is the Epiphone I bought off an Icelandic guy this one I got in the meantime um, while the the red and, and cream was coming here but you know I, I like to do people favors and uh, you know, when, when somebody's short on cash or something, I, I help them out. That's what this is all about. It's, it's a weird mechanism on this coffin case, this heavy coffin case. Uh, you have to turn the locks really heavy. It's really heavy. It, it, this is the Epiphone uh, bag that, that the Icelandic guitar came in. And so I'm, I'm putting it back. Oh yeah, here's some stuff. Right, I'm putting the Epiphone uh, guitar back in its. What is that? Okay, back in its case. There we go. Very nice. Yeah. I'm sure there are other things that I need to say, but that's it for now.